Now, we've got a new Warzone map coming, some new weapons and maps for multiplayer, but I think Season 4 and Modern Warfare 2's most substantial updates are actually coming to DMZ, or at least what we ended up seeing debut today. Today, we ended up getting a new blog post running down the changes coming to DMZ in Season 4, so let's jump into it. Firstly, let's start out with the big additions here. First, the forward operating base is being introduced here at this, which is a new out-of-game sort of hub for a lot of different areas of your gameplay experience. This being a place where operators can complete objectives and unlock upgrades across DMZ, where unlike faction missions, this stuff is actually passive, so you don't have to go and activate anything in particular. It's just going to track in the background as you play along. Now, the FOB or forward operating base is divided into four categories of upgrades of the weapon locker, stash, bounty board, and communication stations, with the goal hopefully being to allow players to progress through DMZ more efficiently than just simply relying on faction missions in the past. Each category will have its own subdivision of sort of stuff that you can expand upon, like the weapons locker will end up including insured weapon slots, insured weapon cooldown times, and contraband weapon stash size increases. The stash itself will include wallet unlocks, an increase to the wallet capacity, key and contraband stash increases as well. The bounty board will end up including personal exfils, border recipes, and buy station discounts, and the communication station will end up including urgent mission access. Now, before I jump into any of those subcategories a little further, because there are some things that are actually pretty cool and worth noting, do note that we also will see in regards to menu access, things like mission objectives, new location objectives, which are map challenges and seemingly detailed on a map when looking at it, and then also a notes collection of some kind. Nothing really too expanded upon in that regard. But moving on to it. Firstly, let's talk about some urgent missions. These are for those that want to grind out faction reputation and a little bit more XP. We're introduced with these in Season 4 that are limited time missions that are unlocked through upgrade objectives in the FOB. They'll rotate in and out and offer rewards for eager and efficient operators on a daily basis. So essentially your daily challenges, but going a little bit more specific with certain factions and things you can do within the DMZ rather than just say like, hey, get five assault rifle kills or something like that. But backtracking a bit in that list of FOB FOB items, the one thing I want to talk about next is the wallet, because this is something that has a lot of big implications for what Warzone can be, but right now, it seems like it's sort of an intermediary step to where we were with nothing to where we could be with what it ultimately could be, and I think that there are some really cool potential on the other side of that what if, but right now we have the wallet, which is a feature that provides the ability to exfil and store cash outside of the world, meaning that you will not lose all of that cash when you exfil, but instead you'll take it with you. Now, instead of being able to do things like... I don't know, say buying upgrades out of game and buying certain items, like maybe let's say a reward camo for a million dollars in cash or something, $10 million in cash in the DMZ. That's something that instead of being able to do that kind of stuff, it just kind of sits there banking for whenever you want to take it in next. Think about it how you had in a couple of zombies maps back in like Black Ops 2, you had the ability to bank cash so that you could end up going match over match and pulling out stuff and being able to buy doors earlier than normal, being able to pack a punch weapons earlier than normal, kind of that same regard here where it is going to be something that it's unlocked and expanded upon through FOP objectives, but you can end up saving cash and then taking cash in. Now, right now, it seems like there is going to be ways to upgrade this to maybe, say, increase that limit of how much you can end up taking because the image that was provided within this most recent DMZ blog showcases a limit of only 100,000. But that'll be interesting because obviously, yes, $100,000 in cash is a lot in DMZ as a starting point. But if they try to do things that could be longer grinds, it's a little bit limiting if that's truly the ceiling that we end up having. Because wouldn't it be cool to end up getting something that you can just grind for days and days and then maybe like unlock a nuke in DMZ and Al Masra, being able to take in like 100 million in cash or something like that to end up getting a nuke. Yes, that's a bit excessive, but it is something that if it was there, I'd grind for it. So I'd be curious to see what becomes of this what that new ceiling looks like. But right now, that's the basic gist here of the wallet. And again, hopefully it can lead to something further on down the line where you can end up purchasing things like rewards out of game. Maybe say with in-game currency that you take out of Almazra, Ashika Island, Building 21, Vondel, Koshi Complex, all that kind of stuff that you could maybe say buy upgrades like insured weapon cooldown sort of timers, taking time off that cooldown. Maybe like NVGs you could end up buying. Maybe you could end up buying a UAV or a self revive or something like that for upped cost to go in with it rather than going in scavenging and then buying it through a buy station. That's just ways that you could end up navigating that a little bit further, but right now we just don't have any information on if that will happen. For now, we do know the wallet will allow you to at least transfer that money, not lose it after an exfil. But next up, let's talk a little bit about faction reputation. This is going to be something that is 
new, but it's going to seem really familiar and it's just kind of a warped way of how we end up already doing something that we have in season three and before since the launch. But faction reputation is essentially going to be a number granted for every completion for a contract, something that each mission will grant you X amount of faction reputation. But if you take a look at the image on screen from DMZ season four, you'll see that there is a progression bar here with this where that tier one of Black Mouse is something that is progressed by, well, faction reputation. So it's essentially like you're ranking up to a different tier. And based off of what seems to be the case, I would almost imagine it takes still five challenges, what looks to be roughly 500 faction reputation to unlock the story mission and then get to tier two, tier three, and so on. So it kind of seems like it's the same thing that we had, but just reskinned, revamped a little bit, except the only difference is that urgent missions will end up contributing also to faction reputation as well. So if you were to take the combination of both of those, you can go a little bit quicker, but if you're just going based off of solely the regular faction mission set, it's just kind of reskinned on how you end up unlocking stuff. But again, nice to know that you can end up doing both now in that regard. Now, in terms of other factions, well, we have the new faction of the Phalanx. This is coming at launch here, but the curious part is that it's still going to be our fourth faction within DMZ. And that sounds kind of weird because, well, we already have four factions, but the redacted faction, which we met in season three, has disappeared from the operations in DMZ. They say it's a story thing here at this, but it's strange that in terms of fundamental gameplay, we're losing a faction to gain another one. So we're kind of just staying one to one with all that one. But we don't have any real intel in regards to what those challenges will entail, any story missions beyond that. But just know that we will get a new faction and a new set of missions as well. My guess, we're going to get like three tiers, two tiers up front, and then two to three at mid season to kind of see what we had with redacted last season, continue on as a sort of pattern. But anyways, the final thing that I do want to talk about is the reset itself before finally touching on quickly a little bit about Vondel and the new exclusion zone and where we can end up infilling here with season four. But as for the reset, we'll see things like contraband weapon inventories be rolled back to only the starting weapons. Key and mission inventories will be emptied. Faction missions will end up being wiped in that progress reset for new challenges to come in. And of course, those insured weapon slots as well being removed and reset as well. These coming along with different ways through the FOB to unlock lock them in the future. But for right now, that is where we're going to be in regards to that. So if you have any of those things that you really want to hold on to, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to. Now, things like your weapon case rewards, your tier rewards in terms of story missions and everything like that, everything that you've earned that's actually on your account and not necessarily on the DMZ menu, all of that will be staying. So blueprints, calling cards, emblems, that kind of stuff, that will not be going away, but instead just the more interactable features with the gameplay loop of DMZ itself. That's what will be refreshing. Now, Vondel, the final thing we'll touch on here before we wrap everything up. Just real quickly, we end up learning a little bit about the sizing itself here with 18 players max on Vondel, so six teams of three total. A little bit larger than Ashika. I think 12 was the max that we ended up seeing in regards to that, so that was four teams of three. And then I want to say Almazra was, I think, 66 players, so 22 teams of three. I could be wrong on that one. It's been a long time since I checked up on those numbers. But much smaller than Almazra here with Vondel, a little bit bigger than Ashika Island in regards to what you can end up doing, though. The map scaling itself seems to be a little bit larger than Ashika Island, though we don't have that confirmed just yet. So you might have a bit more area to work with and not have as much conflict with PvP, but rather PvE still. We'll see a new boss and weapons case introduced here, an exclusive DMZ contract of the signal intelligence where you have to hack phones to gain cash rewards, among some other things here. And of course, dynamic fog that we saw introduced with the Battle Royale experience here in that resurgence mode coming, as well as what will be a few weeks down the line, the lockdown mode, dynamic fog will be coming to DMZ as well. So bear that in mind, it could get a bit mixy and could change some of your loadout choices as well going forward. But that said, that is the new information we ended up getting about DMZ, the reset, the new features coming and everything you need to know. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys looking forward to DMZ season four? Do you like the sound of the reset? Do you like the sound of some of these new features like the wallet and things like that? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, if you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay the day with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone, DMZ, anything season four and beyond. We got you covered as well as other FPS content here in the future. We got X Defiant getting a little bit more information here coming with the Ubisoft conference on Monday. So we'll be covering that. So anyways, if you're interested in any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of it. But that said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.